On Ash Wednesday, <clears throat> about six weeks ago, we began our journey in Lent with the imposition of ashes and the reminder that it was from ashes we have come and to ashes we shall return. For Sister Greta, Barbara Lester, Sharon Crandall, MJ, and myself from this parish, it meant that we were imposing ashes with our brothers and sisters in the LA County jails. We all came away that day with blackened thumbs, tired feet, hearts beating with compassion, and fully aware of God's amazing grace. And thus we began our Lenten journey together in solidarity with one another, including our incarcerated sisters and brothers, and also with every person in this parish. And I say that because you see, the ashes we used that day came from here. They came from the church of our Savior. Those ashes were the product of the burning of last year's palms in Palm Sunday. Palms that you yourself held in your hands. Palms that you touched were transformed by fire into ashes that carried your touch of love and compassion to each and every forehead that day. And so it will be again next year. The palms that you are touching right now will turn instead to the touch of foreheads of others in the form of ashes and love and compassion. So today we stand here again. The story of Jesus' triumphal entry into the holy city ushers us into our journey into Holy Week. We hold new palms in our hands. But how have we grown over the past six weeks? I think it's a question worth considering. How, what have we learned? How have we changed? How have we prepared ourselves for all that Holy Week brings? The drama, the tension, the betrayal, the violence, the passion, the promise, and the love. In the journey through the internal human tides of the week ahead, we should remember that the story of Jesus' suffering and death carries with it the burden of our own awareness of suffering, the pain and the brokenness of the world in which we live and of which we are all a part of. The suffering of another person is not apart from our own suffering and not apart from that of Jesus. Just as Simon of Cyrene, as we heard today, bore the cross of Jesus, so are we to bear the burdens of one another through Holy Week and through our lives. The only real tragedy that's possible in the power drama of Holy Week would be if we were to be so intent and focused on ourselves that we forget the suffering of our brothers and sisters around us. Jesus' suffering is not just for each of us. It is for all of us. And it is into that radical solidarity that we are called. So what will we do with this promise of Holy Week that we hold in our hands? Today we will sing songs of Hosanna and shout out blessings for the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Today let's embrace the hope that this moment brings. It is a hope that will bring us through the perilous terrain of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. It is a hope that says no matter the depth of your struggle, it is not beyond the grasp of God. It is a hope that says even through the shadows of darkness, the light of Easter is breaking on the horizon. That is the hope that we hold in our hands today.
Please kneel. Having in mind the passion of our Savior, let us confess our sins. Holy God, Heavenly Father, you have formed me from the dust in your image and likeness and redeemed me from sin and death by the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through the water of baptism, you have clothed me with the shining garment of his righteousness and established me among your children in your kingdom. But I have squandered the inheritance of your saints and I have wandered far in the land that is waste. I confess to you, almighty God, and to your church that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and in deed, in things done and left undone. I ask you to receive me again into the arms of your mercy and restore me to the blessed company of your faithful people through him in whom you have redeemed the world, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I will. Do you then forgive those who have sinned against you? I Our Lord Jesus Christ, who offered himself to be sacrificed for us to the Father, and who in mercy received your confession of sorrow and faith, absolves you by the grace of the Holy Spirit, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Amen.